Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World where we are headed for Ravensburg. Ravensburg in central Germany. But <laughs> there are no palm trees in Ravensburg. That's right, there's not because well I am back at Pineapple Bay, Pirates Bay Farm, uh just wrapping up some business. Now, after the great escape, we'll call it. <laughs> um it's been a few weeks since that took place, and let's just say that my attorney took over and started having some conversations with these guys. They were not too happy, mind you. Not too happy at all. But, as we have discovered in the past, you know, these guys are, um, let's just say... Not too afraid of taking a little bit of cash to look the other way. And frankly, that's kind of what the whole situation was about more than anything. If we, if we really want to get down to brass tacks, they really... Well, okay. Let, let's call it what it is. They were trying to make a show of force or a show of doing their jobs and it actually it wasn't even about the fertilizer I was creating although that did come up it was about my participation in the smuggling ring they actually do hold high regard for the people who they've agreed to uh, work with as far as bringing brands onto the island and so they had to show that they were doing something to stop the smuggling. Now, I didn't do much. I mean, I wasn't a ringleader or anything. But, they do know that I had participated in buying some merchandise from those guys. So that's why I was targeted to some degree. Um, Elizabeth, on the other hand, well, there's a reason she disappeared and she wasn't telling me. Um... She's not going to be back for a while <laughs> because she was one of the ringleaders. And so they actually closed the book on her pretty hard, which is disappointing. She, she actually is a very good woman um, anyway. And you can see that while I was back, they finally brought the fent. The fent has come, so I have to take care of getting this done. You can also see I have very little money left. Because, let's just say, the uh, amount of money that I had to pay was extensive. Well over half a million dollars. On top of that, I have to leave the island and I can't come back for a year. So, what have I done? Well, I have contacted Martine and Anton, asked them to look after the farm. I've shut down the industries until I can get back and get them functioning and running again. So no more Pirates Bay rum. Very sad, very sad indeed. Anyway, that's going to wrap up my time on Pineapple Bay with the exception of getting the Fent <laughs> moved to Germany now and um, well getting to Germany because in the process of all this taking place I did find a job with one Reinhold Huber and he is looking for someone to manage his cattle operations so I'm gonna get the Fent taken care of I'm going to get on a boat, I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to get on a train, and it's going to be a long trip. But we'll catch up in central Germany. Well, after a very long trip and a day off, here we are in lovely Ravensburg, central Germany. And I am headed for my first day at work. I've rented a small flat here in this lovely little building, lots of nice flowers. And uh, that's where I'm going to be calling home and 
Herr Huber has provided me with a vehicle from his farm to get around this little Unimog. Should come in handy. I'm looking forward to taking advantage of it. Still early enough, I should get some lights going, huh? Okay. Time to go to work. Now, Herr Huber is not here. He doesn't live here. This is just his cattle operation. Now, he has recently transitioned from beef to dairy cattle. The dairy cattle are not producing yet. And look at that. The Fent made it here in good time. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. My job is going to be to get these cattle producing milk, and not only that, well, let's just say Herr Huber is very competitive, and, uh, well, we'll get back to, we'll learn a little bit more, and yeah, that's going to be really helpful in the future, how bright those lights are, that is absolutely outstanding. I'm just going to pack, park back here in the wash bay for now. We're going to take a look around, see what we're up against. Got a nice big harvester, sprayer. That's a nice tractor. I like that. Got, looks like some animal, animal trailer, a standard tipper trailer, tanker trailer probably for milk in the future a decent little semi to, to get us started what else have we got here we've got a big rake cultivator no subsoiler my bad a couple more smaller tractors a nice big baler wow bale wrapper Tedder. Looks like uh, this is probably for bale handling. Oh, hey, we got a nice forge wagon. This guy is a cloth fanatic. I have to. I have to say. He loves his cloths. Oh, the Fent Ten Fifty. I have missed you. <laughs> He's not fooling around in this operation. A nice big cedar. The Hudson Bickler. We got a feed mixer, a big feed mixer. Look at that thing, that's a beast. We've got 400 head of dairy cattle right now. And Herr Huber is not satisfied with those numbers. We've got some straw stored up in the shed over here. Okay. Well, it looks like we're fairly well set. There's one uh, one thing that we don't have that I will be remedying in the future. We don't have a planter. And I think with all these cattle, getting some corn going is going to be a big priority. But these are not standard cattle. They require some specialized feed requirements. And so I'm going to have to take care of that as well. We've got multiple fields, which will be easiest just to show you from the map view. Right about here. This is his op. This is his operation right here. 23, 24, 28, and 29. Now there's a pasture right here that he also owns this is the primary property right here so I need to start sorting out what all of these fields are going to need and what I'm going to put in them now the cattle pasture here this is for grazing and in fact we can go right up here so we've got the 400 head of cattle this is going to need some work before I can bring cattle up here but we'll transfer cattle up here for a day or two and then move them back and bring some more up. 
<clears throat> so they can graze on the natural grass up here instead of having to consume a lot of expensive feed. But it should all work to our favor. Now he has tasked me specifically with expanding his herd. That's what he wants to see. So he's got 400 head right now. Well, we'll get into that more in just a little bit, but let's just say <clears throat> the herd expansion is extensive. What he wants is extensive. And so all of our fields are just empty right now. I need to get them up and running. It is the first day of spring. That's going to be my first task. And what do they need? All four of them need to be plowed. Only one of them needs lime. That's good. Very good. We've already got some fertilizer on some of these, so that's going to be helpful also. I'm going to start on 28 and 29 because I think I know what I want to get in there. If we look at our cattle, they're in pretty good shape. But you can see right here, they do take some specialized feeding. So we have maize silage, grass silage, or WCS. They need to have that hay, clover hay, or alfalfa hay. They need to have that. Clover silage or alfalfa silage, they're going to need that. Fresh grass, clover, or fresh maize, they're going to want. Or have to have that also. So I've got to meet all four of these food requirements to make sure that these cows do what they're going to be doing. I do want to go check their, their uh, food area real quick because they're saying cleanliness is low, but I don't see anything here to indicate that. Anyhow, it looks to me like 28 and 29 need to be plowed. Actually, all of them need to be plowed, but I want to start in 28 and 29 because I know what I'm putting in there already. And getting that going is going to be high priority. Now well, let's just see what this will do for us. Yeah, this cloth with the tracks on it, this might actually do just a little bit better than the fence on these fresh fields for plowing. The fence going to come in really handy on this farm, but for now... It's nice to use different equipment. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love that fan. But I've never had an opportunity to use a Kloss tractor before. At least not very much. And I can see right now there's a spot there that's going to have to have some repair work done to it. Oh yeah. Now, Herr Huber has graced the farm with $100,000 to get started. He did say that um, if I find anything that I need in particular, and I've got a good reason for it, he's, he's willing to listen as far as expenses go. So, I'm not set 100% in stone on that. Heck, this tractor has GPS on it, so what am I doing not setting that up? We've got temperatures just just above freezing. You know, we're in the 40s today at 7.30 in the morning. Not bad. That puts a really nice texture on the ground too. Very nice. So like I said, we are in central Germany. 
And since this is the next stop on the Harv's World World Tour, guess what that means? Some of you know already, some of you don't. That means we are going to be learning about Germany during this one. Much as we learned about Italy during Ischia Farm, and not that the uh, the Caribbean wasn't worthy, but I think the pirate theme there was working quite nicely. I mean, it was a important part of development of that area, so... Well, that pretty well takes care of our two small fields. 28 and 29 are plowed at least. Now I do want to get these planted as soon as possible and you'll understand why in just a minute. Because I'm going to need them to be harvestable as soon as possible. That's going to be a priority. A priority indeed. So as things stand right now, I am running six days per season, just so you know where we stand. This is day one of spring. I've got five more days. Well, we'll see how that plays itself out. I'm not entirely sure yet just how, um, how well six days is going to go. We might need less than that. We might need more than that. Especially as this operation expands, because it's going to expand fairly dramatically. I have to tell you, Herr Huber is a very competitive man. Very competitive indeed. And here's his deal. So in the areas around Ravensburg, there are several dairy operations. And last year, a gentleman, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but there was a gentleman who, uh, who had over a thousand head of dairy cattle that produced an astounding amount of milk. Astounding. Well, Herr Huber can't settle for that. He's the kind of guy who has to be number one. Even if it means walking through number two. And let's see, what have I got? I've got my seed, or no, I've got fertilizer and seed, and then lime right here. So let's get these opened up. There it goes. look at those fields again. Yeah, 29 needs lime. I'm going to have to sort that out because I'll tell you one thing this farm doesn't have. It does not have a lime spreader. Uh, that's going to be the seed tank. So this is the fertilizer tank right here. Sometimes getting these to line up properly can be just a bit of a challenge. Oh, nailed it. Okay, that works. Now, one other thing about uh, Herr Huber that is important to note he is very supportive of his nation. Hence the uh, all the cloth equipment. This is going to be tight. Really tight. Get out of here though. Get it out of here. So 
So unless I just can't get it from a manufacturer based in Germany, then uh, then it's pretty much unacceptable. So, for example, right now, this is a prime opportunity. What do I need? I need something that will spread lime. I don't have a lot of money to play with. So we're going to go into our fertilizer technology and see what we've got. Actually, you know, this little Cavernland unit right here might just do the trick. It's reasonably priced. It's got a decent... I think that's going to do it. That will be the ticket for our lot. Let's make sure it spreads lime. No, it only spreads fertilizer, so that's not going to work. I know this horse is not going to work because it only does fertilizer also. However, these Bridal units will do lime. Looks like I might have to go the expensive route. And for now I will just stick with 12 meters. I've only got a small field requiring lime at the moment. So... That's gonna have to work. Oh my goodness, it's green and not red. <laughs> don't get a lot of options when it comes to spreading lime but that means uh, this is going to take time to run down to the store to pick that thing up and I think I need to run through the farmyard to get there and oh yeah I'm going to have to fix that mm, that's a rough dip right there I don't know way, my way around here very well yet. I'm lear I'll learn quickly. Don't worry, I'll learn. And you know, I better check my PDA. The shop. There it is. Oh, it's not far from the house, actually. Good. Sehr gut. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Which, if you didn't know, Germany, parts of Germany and, and Europe in general were actually held by the Romans for a while. So I guess I can technically say when in Rome. I should probably get my beacons on since I'm uh, driving a tractor through town. I'm not sure how keen they're going to be on that. Okay, here's our shop coming up right here. Now, how do I get in the place? Aha! Shop, I have you now. There we go. Excellent. Very nice, very nice indeed. Well, I have to tell you, this 
isn't going to require a lot of lime, but at least the job for now is not going to require a lot of lime. However, this is pretty much only ever going to be used for lime, so there's no sense in not just filling it up. Now it's 28 that needed lime, and I'm going to check and just see if I've got any other fields at the moment that, uh, that are going to need a little bit of love on the lime department. Nope, just 29. All that expense for 20, just this little tiny field. That's okay. It's all right. So, I've got my work cut out for me. I mean, you know, 20, or, <laughs> I mean, he's got 400, but he wants 1,000. That's a lot of cattle. More importantly, that's a lot of cattle to feed. A lot of cattle to feed. So I've got that on my plate. That's that's the big deal here. Let's say my target goal is going to be eleven hundred. So I've got a plan for 1,100 head of cattle. That means two more cattle barns. Probably at least one more pasture because I can only move about 125 cows at a time out to the current pasture land. Just a little tiny spot right here. Just that right there. Okay. And then, of course, all of the feed that's going to be required to keep them going. That's going to mean a lot of silage. That's going to mean a lot of hay. That's going to mean a lot of straw. Maybe I can find a way to utilize their other outputs, like manure or at the bare minimum sell it off to make a little extra money because it's going to be an expensive outlay and you know I mean regardless of what he says yes there's money if there are expenditures but that's only going to hold true as long as this farm is producing and bringing money back in and he understands that he's a savvy businessman this Herr Huber very savvy and he is uh, very much expecting a return on him, his investment but I don't think that overrides his desire to be the biggest dairy producer in the region <laughs> you have to understand just how competitive this guy is if you could have seen his face when he was explaining all this to me As you can see, I am going to be planting alfalfa in this first field. Why? Well... Because we are going to need alfalfa silage, we are going to need alfalfa hay. Alfalfa is going to play a big role in our our cattle diet and so I want to get alfalfa started early ASAP Ooh, that's, uh, that's doing a very nice job it looks like I might have just just enough room look at that Although I missed, I missed an edge. Mm. And yes, I'm just anal retentive enough that missing that edge drives me a little bit freaking crazy. Uh, 
I won't miss it this time, though. Well, on this first field, it's not going to be too bad. Not bad at all. Got plenty of room to maneuver. And thankfully, there's a nice open field right down here. And I do have to remember we are dealing in euros now, so um, keep in mind my American brain does not always function well when it comes to European units of measurement. Which is why I'm viewing the thermostat in Fahrenheit instead of <laughs> Celsius because that's what I'm used to. And since I can program it to show whatever I want it to show, I mean, if I were to jump on a computer right now and say, pull up the weather for Munich, Germany, I could tell them to display that in Fahrenheit so that uh, what I grew up with and got used to is easy for me to understand and not have to do a big formulaic conversion not that there's anything wrong with it it's just what I'm used to and I'm old and I'm <laughs> set in my ways <laughs> this is not an American sitting here saying why don't you guys use Fahrenheit <laughs> you know if you would just use Fahrenheit, then we could all understand when... You... No, I'm not saying that. Not at all. I'm saying it's what I learned. <laughs> That's it. Neither way, in my opinion, is better or superior. Nothing like that. <laughs> just so we're clear, I don't want people coming back at me going, You Americans are all alike. You just think you're so superior to the rest of the world. Nope. I mean, I'll never be an apologist. I am an American and I'm proud of my country. But I also believe that everyone has the right to be proud of their country. No matter where you live. Every country has done amazing things, has amazing accomplishments. I mean, that's one of the that's one of the reasons for the world tour. You know, we get to learn about new places and the amazing things that those countries have done. You remember Italy? If you were if you were watching the Ischia Farm, part of the world tour. You know, I was talking about, it just so happened that Eddie Van Halen passed away while I was doing that series. And I was able to tie in the fact that, uh, well, we wouldn't have had an Eddie Van Halen without Italy because Italy invented the guitar. So yes, every country has a right to be proud. Absolutely every single one. I'm not going to apologize for the United States. I'm proud, just like I said. Anyway. I need to get the second field planted, and that one, which you may have already guessed, is getting planted in clover. Again, part of the cattle operation, clover is going to be a big part of the cattle feed. Our cattle are going to need clover hay, clover silage, and so having these two planted early and often is going to be a big, big part of getting this cattle operation to a level that will satisfy Herr Huber's lust for dominance. <laughs> 
Harv, I must be the number one milk producer in the region. There is no holding back. Make it happen. All right, you got it, brother. I want it like a carbo on it. Yeah, this cedar's not as bad as I thought. It's not nearly as difficult as I thought it would be. It's actually working out fairly well. Well, it does require a truckload of horsepower. Even on a small slope like that, it can be hard to get a good running start, but hey. Now, what this can also mean for our operation here getting started. Well, it can mean that uh, we can take advantage of some of the other farmers in the region. When I say take advantage, what I mean is pick up work from them. Especially if I get caught up on this farm. Everything is done. Then it might be necessary to uh, pick up some contracts to bring extra money in to offset the costs. Because there's one other piece of equipment I know we need already. And I don't know where the money's going to come from. I don't have enough for it. Maybe I just lease it. And yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just lease it. We'll see. We'll see. That's probably going to be for the second day of spring. Okay, I really thought this big cedar was going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but it's actually not doing too bad. Not bad at all. But there is one more major task I need to get done today, and then I still have the two big fields that need to be plowed out. But that is not on the priority list at the moment. This is... Luckily, this is almost done. Very close to being done. I'll tell you what. We finally kind of got there in the end. But it's really nice to be using some real equipment instead of pieced together equipment that was way too small for uh, the operation I was trying to run on Pineapple Bay way too small and hey um, fun fact about Germany might as well get into those interesting fact about Germany since we were already talking about the world tour and learning something about different countries one interesting fact that I learned about Germany is you can get a college education there absolutely free and you want to know the kicker? You don't even have to be a German citizen. If you want to get a college education and you can get the visa to get into the country, you get a free college education. That, that, I mean, for those of you who've been to college, who've gone to college, or who are looking at going to college, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is um, a high value reward. <laughs> you know, in the U.S. alone, a four-year degree just for tuition would run you about $36,000. So not only are you saving that money, but now you're getting all of that knowledge for free. 
That is amazing. That is an impressive accomplishment. That's going to give us a good start on Ravensburg. We've got alfalfa in the ground. We've got clover in the ground. It's the first day of spring. What appears to be a very lovely spring. Almost 60 degrees this afternoon. But I think that's going to do it. I do appreciate you coming along for the ride. If you enjoyed the episode, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Until next time, take care.